problem. So let's look at the importance of the iodine in the system, of which an adequately functioning thyroid is only part. So the most important thing about iodine is it creates apoptosis. Well, what is apoptosis? It is the accelerated killing of dead and dying cells and, and cancer cells. And this is what happens when you are what we have with a fast. We have an increased apop apoptosis. People get younger. It's the key to longevity, is that the dead and dying and cancer cells are taken out of the system. There are two minerals that do this, iodine and oxygen, and they work together. So we're going to take this a step further to really get what's going on. It appears that the research is showing us that adequate iodine, and 96% of the population in the U.S. are deficient in iodine, and the world maybe 72%. Adequate iodine is very important for treating, I'm going to say we're treating, and preventing certain cancers. What are those certain cancers? Well, cancer of thyroid is one, breast cancer is another. Cancer of the breast, cancer of the uterus, cancer of the endometrium, cancer of the ovary, cancer of the prostate are big players in this story. Iodine insufficiency is associated with increased cancers in those areas. Because if you understand apoptosis, you understand that those are the areas that particularly get weak in apoptosis when you have an iodine deficiency. How do we know this? What are the clues? Well, we look at Japan, where their iodine intake is greater than 100 times what we have in what was recommended to save the U.S., and uh, which is about 13.8 milligrams per day. And they have vastly reduced Cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, endometrial cancer, uterine cancer, uh, ovarian cancer, stomach cancer, and esophageal cancer. Those are your key players. And when Japanese people come here and get on our diet, which is the low iodine diet, their rates of cancers go up in those areas. So apoptosis directly relates now to prevention of cancer. So uh, that's important. Now, another area that's important is fibrocystic breast disease, uh, which is very, very high in American women. Uh, and that, that creates a swelling and tenderness of the breast, and it's also a precancer situation. And it's rampant because fibrocystic breast disease is very much related to insufficient iodine uh -huh. in the same spectrum. And I, I, I can't say I'm seeing it 100 percent, but maybe two thirds of the women I see, you know, have fibrocystic breast disease. And this is treatable, and iodine is part of that. I'm not going to go into the, the treatment of fibrocystic breast disease, but it's treatable, reversible, and really easy. Okay, but you got to have your basic iodine. So let's take us to another understanding. The most concentrated organ in, uh, uh, of iodine is, is the thyroid. The second highest is the ovaries. Okay, and so we get, we get ovarian cancer, ovarian cysts when we're low in iodine. The breast actually hold uh, about 200 uh, uh, milligrams of iodine. The thyroid does 50 milligrams. So breast and breast milk are very, very important. Iodine deficiency is a big deal here. And then the ovaries, as I said, the skin holds about 400 milligrams. So a lot of skin infections, skin fungal infections we get from that. And then iodine is, is, is really in almost all the organs, the salivary organs, the adrenal glands, insufficient iodine in the adrenals causes adrenal weakening. Uh, and it goes on. And, and I'm not going to mention all those, but we get that it's a, it's 
literally almost every organ system in the body. That's what we're talking about. And it is clear that low iodine is, is also associated with increased insulin resistance and diabetes. So what Brownstein or Abrams and Brownstein were doing, they were giving diabetics 100 milligrams of iodine a day. So we got 100 milligrams and we have 400 micrograms. Well, you know, we're talking almost 300 times the dose level. What's going on? What's going on is if you're only talking about, it's like the vitamin C story, you're only talking about not becoming cretin, that means seriously brain damage, and not getting goiter, which is severe you know, destruction in the thyroid, then the 400 micrograms works. But if we're talking about not getting cancer, we're talking about stimulating apoptosis, we're uh, talking uh, about the antiparasitic effect, uh, iodine is the most powerful uh, killer of bacteria, viruses, um, fungi, and parasites there is. It is a strongly negative charge uh, quality, and it kills all on, on contact within 90 seconds most of your a variety of parasites and bacteria, viruses, and so forth. So it, it's very, very important. And that realm alone. Okay. Now, why is that important? Because the parasites in our gut and the parasites all over our system all uh, create other problems. One is, is they um, take up the eye, they, they, they block ATP production. Well, one of the causes of AT, low ATP production is low mitochondrial production where ATP is made. In a normal cancer person, they got two to three hundred per cell okay, of mitochondria. In a healthy person, we're talking about three thousand to five thousand per cell. Healthy. What are you doing when you're healthy? You got more energy. What do you do when you have more energy? You don't have chronic fatigue. You don't have fibromyalgia. These are all things that uh, that is associated with low iodine and get ameliorated with, with the adequate iodine. And also the lymph, which is a big cleanser of the system, is uh, has is filled with all these kind of parasites, bacteria, and so forth. And we don't have enough iodine. The lymphatic lymphatic system is. is very compromised, and we don't have that cleansing going on. Iodine is also very important for stimulating the immune system on every level, which is an important part of this whole consideration. <coughs> so, we're seeing a much bigger picture when we talk about iodine deficiency. Also, adrenal function, ovarian function. Now, what I say ovarian, how about estrogen? Research shows that when people have adequate iodine, their the three estrogens are put into balance. And estriol, which is the anti-cancer one, it goes into more predominance, uh, and uh, the whole breast cyst and estrogen dominance is put back into balance, which is good obviously for women as well as men. So that's another role that iodine plays, it rebalances the hormonal systems. Now, obviously, iodine makes the thyroid work, too. But iodine is very, very important for brain function. How important is it? About uh, one-third of the whole human population lives in iodine-deficient soils. That's a problem. And what we see throughout the world is rates of uh, cretinism and low brain function, hyperactivity, uh, ADD. They're all associated with low uh, and mental retardation. They're also associated with low neonatal iodine. So mothers who have insufficient iodine are going to have a higher rate in their babies of mental retardation poor mental development, and the research says a difference of at least 13.5 <coughs> points in IQ. That's pretty significant. Uh, 
slow growth mentally and physically and also sexual development. Now we're talking a range of problems. We also know that low iodine is associated with a variety of mental problems. You know, anxiety, depression, poor memory function. Literally low iodine is associated with a slower metabolism in the brain and a, a decreased uh, blood circulation to the brain. So when you have adequate, sustainable iodine, which is for the whole system, you're going to get better brain circulation and better brain function. If you don't, you have a slowing of consciousness, a slowing of mental ability. This is really important. So I'm observing that people who get adequate iodine, not the minimum to prevent you from being a cretin, that's a very low standard. Okay? That's your 400 micrograms. You're not going to get a Goyer's who will be a cretin. They're great. You know? How about being smart and capable and having your endocrine system working well, your immune system working well, your protection against you know, most of the cancers, and having a full load of energy going on in your system because you have adequate ATP. To make adequate ATP, you have to have appropriate thyroid hormone on, uh, on your mitochondria, and you need iodine to do that. So now we're seeing a bigger picture. We're not a minimalist point of view. Say, so, okay, you're not going to be a cretin. Great, thank you. But are you going to be bright? No. Are you going to have a fast mind? No. Are you going to be emotionally balanced? No. Are you going to be slow and basically on the dumb side of things? Yes. And what we're seeing that in the whole world, what's going on. So now the question is, and I have to be clear, um, there's, one other, there's one other major player in this. Toxicity. Right now, Fukushima has gone off, and people who are inadequate in iodine are being uh, completely loaded up with radioactive iodine, which destroys brain function, thyroid function, and all the organs I'm talking about. The radioactive iodine. What's your main protection? Have adequate iodine, because it forces things out. Now, along with this story is toxic halogens. What is that? Bromine is a toxic halogen. Fluorine is a toxic halogen. Fluorine is the highest amount of concentration in your pineal gland. If our third eye is going to open up, we've got to get the fluorine out. What does that? Iodine. So what we see, and what I'm actually doing now, testing for iodine sufficiency, is that initially when we start with the iodine uh, supplementation, which everybody needs, or all but 4% of the population needs, uh, we will get more bromine out, more fluorine out, more chlorine out. And let me also say, it pulls out heavy metals, particularly mercury, lead, and cadmium. So you're getting kind of a detox. So we have to understand that that, that detox thing, we have to manage, but understand that you can get that and feel a little worse before you feel better. It's just like going on live food, isn't it? You're going to feel a little worse before you feel better. But what's going on is that people in the medical world, for whatever reason, are focusing on that part of it, and misunderstanding that a healing crisis is not a, a long-term problem. So one of the things that comes out, and actually it's true, for 40 for 26 to 40 hours, I said hours, didn't say days, you can have a transient hypothyroid situation. It's two to three days, one to three days. But people like Ricola are focused on that, is I'll be careful, but are not looking at the bigger picture. Okay? Also, um, there can be an increased TSH for up to six months. It doesn't create hypothyroidism. There are no symptoms, but if you're making your diagnosis that to increase THA means low thyroid, then you get rather confused. But when you look at the research, there are no low thyroid symptoms. The TH, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone from the pituitary, increases for a, a different reason. Because when people are low uh, uh, in iodine, the uh, NIS, 
sodium iodide support system that carries iodide into the cells is decreased. Well, TH, you know, because you don't need it because you're not getting enough iodine. So you're going to add iodine to the system. TSH is important for stimulating NIS. So it will stay up for six months or up to six months so enough NIS is produced so that we are able to increase our transport of iodine into all our cellular systems, our hormonal systems, our glandular systems, and so forth. That is also being misinterpreted as hypothyroidism, which is not the case. And that's how we get this, be careful, you're going to get hypothyroid. Now, it is possible. Uh, Abrams, who's kind of the leading researcher in the world on all this, suggests that we need 50 grams, I didn't say milligrams, I said 50 grams, which is an un unimaginable amount of iodine to create that situation. So, just in, to get the overview, for the, if you just stop in cretinism, which is like a bow ball, it's like we're going to give you enough vitamin C to treat scurvy so you don't get scurvy, not to make you healthy and vibrant, but just to treat scurvy. Then, you know, a little bit, 60 milligrams of C is adequate, but we know we need a lot more vitamin C. So that's another thing that iodine is. It's a major antioxidant, and it's particularly potent for knocking out the hydroxyl groups, which is a superoxidant effect, the <coughs> OH groups. So um, we're looking at a whole lot of things that it does, you know. Um, okay, so the second level.